Oh, that works. Veterans, distinguished, distinguished guests, guests, clergy, clergy honor guard, guard, police, police and, and fire, fire service, service, ladies and gentlemen, and gentlemen of all ages. ages. Okay. Would uh, yeah. we like, like to rise, rise for uh, uh, Old Canada? Canada. Thank you for coming here and joining with us and help us in paying our respect to those who have served to uh, and continue to serve our country. My name is George McClellan and I'm joined today by Lois Thompson and uh, it's an honor to be your MCs here for today's ceremony. We're humbled to stand here today in our first in-person observance since 2019 and bid welcome <coughs> to our veterans who can join us for this service and acknowledge those who are unable to join us for these remembrance ceremonies. We would also like to uh, acknowledge some of the good work that's helped make today happen. Uh, folks like Louis Fiat, who does the uh, keeps the caretaking of the cenotaph in such uh, in such great form. Uh, Harold Fiat here for the uh, audio portion here, and it will be uh, rebroadcast at a later time. Uh, in the day for those unable to make it here today, it'll be available. Uh, we can find out how to get that and we'll make no note of it before we leave today. Um, and the members of the committee uh, who last year, <coughs> due to COVID restrictions, <coughs> pardon me, were unable to, uh, to meet as we are today, but uh, the folks did come in, had a, a, a very private service. The flags were lowered in remembrance, so the Although we couldn't meet as a group, the tradition was carried on. Uh, in addition to the role, which will be called later, we are saddened this year to include the name of June McIntosh, who has left us since our last commemorative service. And uh, we would also at this time like to extend our thanks to the memory of Warren Mason, who was a longtime treasurer for the Thorburn War Veterans Association, who has passed away. Uh, our condolence to the families, and they are not forgotten. Our respect, thoughts, and prayers are extended to those from our area who are actively serving today, either at home or on deployment. You are carrying the torch that was passed to you by those we honor today, and for this, we thank you. I've been coming each here each day for as long as I can remember, and I'm proud of the respect shown by our community in paying tribute to those who have answered the call to the service. It's, uh, we've done this my whole life, and. The, the crowd just seems to, to get bigger and we don't forget. We'd also like to acknowledge the, member, uh, the, the presence here of the younger members of our assembly today. You are our future and uh, I can tell you that your presence is greatly appreciated by all gathered here today. I'm sure the call that we, the names of those that we call to later in this program would also be pleased to see that we have not forgotten their contributions by, t by their today's attendance and, a con and I'm confident that we'll continue to do so into the future. Welcome. 
uh, for the prayer of remembrance on behalf of the Freedom Bible Church and Pastor Alan Klein, Southern Observer. Um, we actually have two people that are going to do a prayer. Uh, due to Fiona, we weren't able to get through to the, the pastor that's here now, and it's a good way to introduce them to the community. I would ask uh, David Sponigal and uh, Richard Semna Nina to come forward for prayer. Great. Hey. Uh, I'm Richard Semenina. I'm just uh, temporarily filling in for Pastor Allen. Al Pastor Allen and Bonnie are currently on uh, sabbatical, and I've uh, been uh, filling in as a speaking pastor while they're away. Uh, I have been asked to uh, uh, pray a prayer of remembrance, and so let us, uh, let us bow our heads in prayer and remember those uh, who gave their lives. Dear God, we thank you for the freedom you have given to us and for the price that was paid by Jesus so that we could live free. We remember today the cost, the great sacrifice for freedom and liberties that we enjoy on a daily basis, the men and women who, give their, who gave their lives so that we can enjoy those freedoms. We remember and are thankful for the men and women who gave their last breath in defense of our nation, our freedom, and our children's future. We thank you for the brave men and women who fought so courageously for our nation. We can never be grateful enough for the sacrifices they made, and we are humbled by their willingness to put their own lives aside for the benefit of ours. Father, carve out their sacrifices in our hearts so we may never forget the loss of these heroes. We ask for your covering and blessing over their families. We pray that you would be gracious and encircle them with your peace. We pray for your great favor and goodness to be evident in their lives. Lord, we pray you'll always Help us to be grateful for the sacrifices that have been made for our nation, for those who have gave their lives for our freedom. We pray that their sacrifices may never be forgotten, nor the pain of their families. We acknowledge that freedom comes at a cost, and we pray that we can pursue peace. We pray that we can never forget that the freedoms we hold dear were kept safe for us with blood, sweat, and tears. We remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice by laying down their lives to secure our freedom. We thank you for having brought us together to pay tribute to those who lost their lives defending our freedom as a nation. We ask that you guide us and make us worthy of the sacrifices from which we have benefited. We pray that we may never forget how blessed we truly are as a nation, as a people, and as your children. And in your name we pray. Amen. Dear God, on this special day, we remember those women, men and women, who volunteered, sacrificed, served, fought, and died for our freedom. We also remember those who survived and returned home, forever scarred, but who carried on, had families, and helped to build up this beautiful country of Canada. Most of them, too, have passed, but we remember them. Lord, today we also think of those presently serving in our armed forces. They are constantly ready to protect and serve Canada and its people. Bless them with your love. Dear Lord, help us to encourage our future generations to continue this dedication of remembrance for these brave souls. May we never forget. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We will uh, now have a poem of remembrance uh, read by Mary Kay McKinnon. Good morning. I will be reading In Flanders Fields by John McCrae. In Flanders fields the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place and in the sky the larks still bravely singing fly scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead short days ago. We lived 
felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Uh, we will now sing Abide With Me. As falls the eventide, the darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless who abide with me. Swift to its close, ebbs out life's little day. Patrick Marshall. Would now like to call upon Boyd McDonald for the le reading of the honor roll. The following is the list of names of those who, when called upon, made the supreme sacrifice. On a war memorial, their names are distinguished by an asterisk. J. Edward Campbell A. H. Campbell J. 
James A. Cameron, Bernard Carroll, Peter A. Cavanaugh, Franklin Crook, Jackie Crook, Lloyd George Dean, Harry Dern, A. McKean Dickey, Harry Dixon Jr., Lloyd Ferguson, Owen Flynn, Robert Flynn, James E. Frazier, Robert Ferguson Frazier, Thomas Grant, William Angus Grant, Herbert Grice, Ivan Henderson, William J. Huggin, Lyle William Izzard, Ernest George Jordan, John C. Kennedy, Philip Long Jr., William Theodore McCall, William D. McCullough, Alex McDonald, DCM, Harry C. McDonald, Gordon J. McDonald, Irvin McDonald, John James McDonald, W. Henry McDonald, Joseph McCachran, John McGregor, Gordon McKay, Adam James McKenzie, Charles A. McLean, Hector N. McLean, James McGregor McLean, Neil A. McLean, Joseph T. McLeod, Gordon Murray, Lawrence R. Murray, Arthur A. Robertson, John Fraser Ross, Andrew Sims, Andrew Weir, John Charles Weir, Alexander F. Williams, William Woods, Colin M. Wright, Beverly Bashash, Solomon. Aaron Bannerman will now do the last post, followed by two minute silence.
They shall grow not old, as we that left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them, we will remember them. like to now call upon uh, Father Colin McKinnon on behalf of uh, Parish Lismore Arisag for a prayer of peace. Loving creator of all, as we gather here today, our hearts are full of memories of children, family members, friends, and comrades who served and died in wars of liberation for the cause of peace. We remember and honor all these men and women who fell in battle and those who, while they did not die, offered their bodies, minds, and energies in the cause of our freedom. We recall their sacrifice, their leaving home, leaving loved ones, and their courage in facing danger and the unknown. May we be forever inspired by their service and dedication. Today we face new wars where so many die needlessly lose their homes and livelihood, become refugees and wanderers of this earth. O oh God, be near us and support us with your presence and accompany us in our pain and loss. In their memory, help us as we rededicate ourselves to the work of freedom, justice, and peace for all people. We may continue to serve the, the world in the cause of peace, a peace that begins in our own lives, in our families, communities, and our nation. May nations of the world be inspired by the peacemaking of our land, by minds and hearts dedicated to freedom. Bless us and open our hearts so that we may accept the challenge of being peacemakers at home, in our work, in our communities, and in the world. Help us to always remember. We ask this prayer in your name, the All-Holy One. Amen. Uh, we're very blessed to be led in our singing this morning by our soloists, Jean Cameron and Don Gorman, and they have a special selection they'd like to do, Where Have All the Flowers Gone? Where have all the flowers gone? Oh, 
go Where have all the young men gone? Gone to soldiers, everyone When will they ever learn? When will they ever learn? Where have all the graveyards gone? Long time passing Where have all the graveyards gone Long time ago Where have all the graveyards gone Gone to flowers, everyone When will they ever learn gone long time passing where have all the flowers gone long time ago where have all the flowers gone young girls pick them everyone when will they ever learn when Soldiers gone, long time passing. Where have all the graveyards gone? Where have all the flowers gone? Thank you so much. That was beautiful. I'm going to call upon Bill Chase to introduce our guest speaker. Uh, the, introductions. <laughs> the introductions are usually a, a bit stiff and formal. So let's just say I'm a retired Navy officer whose wife served uh, in the United Nations uh, EF. Is, uh, is Malia, and is also entitled to wear the blue beret of a peacekeeper. Can you tell me where and what date? Oh, no, never mind. Oh. <laughs> Ray Dickinson. Huh? Ray Dickinson. Ray Dickinson, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe today's the today, is it? <laughs> <laughs> what an appropriate question. Colin raised in his prayer. And the question continues to all of us on a day like this, and it is this. Do you believe in peace? Now, Paul was writing a letter to the Ephesians a number of years ago, and he said this to them. He said, For he himself is our peace, who has made both one, and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances so as to create in himself one new man from the two thus making peace and that he might reconcile them both to god in one body through the cross thereby putting to death their enmity and he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near So the question continues from Paul's age even to our age, to this very moment. If I asked you the question, do you believe in peace? I'm pretty sure every one of us would say yes. But by saying yes, I think what we really mean is that we hope that there is such a thing as peace. And we affirm that it is a much desired thing. 
I'm convinced that everyone wants peace and believes that real peace would be a blessing for everyone around the world. But if I asked you, do, believe, do you believe that peace is actually possible and that war can be abolished? I think the answer would have to become no. And we would certainly be excused for having our doubts. Do you know that in over 3,000 years before the 20th century, more than 8,000 peace treaties were signed? 8,000 treaties to put an end to war. Guess how long they lasted? On average, about two years. One of those treaties in the 20th century, you may remember, was at the conference at Bretton Woods, where the nations of Europe solemnly pledged not to start any more wars. Shortly after that treaty was signed, World War I, the war to end all wars, broke out. And the rest, as we say, is history. So if you look back on the reputation of peace treaties, you might be excused for having your doubts about the possibility of peace on earth. Why do you think this is so? Why are we so skeptical about the possibility that there could be peace in our time? Well, if you look back at the history of weapons technology and remember that every new advance in firepower was supposed to deter war, every weapon since the first slingshot wielded by David all those years ago was supposed to be so terrible and so destructive that war would become unthinkable. We called it mutually assured destruction to frighten everyone into peace. And we hoped that this would maybe force everyone to think seriously about the next step. Unfortunately, you can look back on the whole history of trusting in technology to end war, and you can be excused for having your doubts about the possibility of peace. Well, what about the economic benefits of war? Could it actually be that war is so profitable, so economically stimulating, so filled with the promise of work for everyone, that it might actually be a good thing? Well, all we have to do is look around us, don't we, to get the idea here. All around us are powerful international interests aimed at gaining or keeping power and the integrity of their borders. In our large neighbor to the south, there are thousands of bureaucrats, both military and civilian, who would lose their jobs. And the country itself would, would lose its influence if war were really abolished. Of course, there's nothing uniquely evil about this. All of these people have their, compart their counterparts in the former Soviet Union and other nations on Earth. When you consider all the powerful interests around the world who are wedded to war, you may be excused for having your doubts about the possibility of peace. Your doubts about peace might deepen even further if I made it clear that I'm talking about genuine peace, not ceasefire agreements, nor even the thaw in something we call Cold War. Martin Luther King defined it well when he said, real peace is not just the absence of hostility or tension. Rather, real peace is the presence of justice. Real peace is the removal of those underlying conditions of injustice and exploitation that fan the flames of resentment that finally lead to war. So do you still believe that there could be peace? In the face of all this evidence and these reasons for doubt, the text that Paul, the letter that Paul wrote to the Ephesians makes a claim. A little further on, it says to us that we already have peace. Jesus Christ is our peace. He's already broken down the dividing wall of hostility between us and reconciled us to one another, making us one. Further on in Scripture, in fact, throughout the whole Bible, there is a consistent theme of peace. In Jesus' life alone, when he was born in Bethlehem, the angels called him the Prince of Peace. 
We're told that during his lifetime, he preached peace to us here and to our enemies far away. And now that he has risen from the dead, he is our peace, our peace. He is the very embodiment of peace and justice and of love. Paul suggested another way, <clears throat> a specific in his reading, this peace to the Ephesians. It's a Christian strategy, a Christ-like method for achieving peace. We are promised that it will work if only we will have faith to give it a try. Here's the scene. <clears throat> person A and person B, having been quarreling for years, in fact, it seems they will never be reconciled to another, just cannot see eye to eye. The Christian answer, what Paul says, is the only way we're going to break down our reliance on assured destruction and look elsewhere for economic growth is for both of them to become a new person, person C. Folks, this is only possible when they first make peace with each other through Jesus Christ. They'll be united only when they live in Christ and he in them. Love, compassion, grace, and forgiveness will be second nature as they both strive for the same thing, to be like Christ for each other. In Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, he, he adds, If anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old persons could never get along the new ones can live as one in peace. It's as if the nations of the earth are like the neighborhood bully who decided to try and change his ways. I've learned a better way to settle arguments, he said to his friend. I used to settle them with my fists, but now I use this, he said, pointing to his head. Oh, said the friend, you mean you use your brain? No, said the bully, I butt them with my head. There's the problem of peace in a nutshell. Nations have tried for thousands of years to win peace through the use of force, violence, intimidation, compromise, negotiation, but none of it has worked. Peace eludes us because we keep butting our heads. We've never had the imagination, the courage, or the faith to try another way. Jesus' way. The one who is the way and the truth and the life. With Christ as their peace, spiritually transformed nations would be less concerned with might and more concerned with right. They'd be less concerned with missiles and more concerned with mercy. They'd be less concerned with their own advantage and more concerned with the disadvantaged. Nations would overcome the threat of an enemy by making that enemy a friend. They would take seriously the ethics of Jesus and make them social, showing a desperate world that peace and goodwill are the gifts that Christ brings to people and to nations alike. Now I know, you're looking at me and you say, ah oh, yeah, look, preacher, you're supposed to be saying stuff like this. We're always, sometimes, not always, but sometimes accused of being naive and simple-minded and too Bible-centered when we talk about matters like this. So, I'm going to offer to you some words from one of the most hard-headed military men you will ever have met, who gives a similar message. His name is General Omar Bradley, one of the most honored and decorated soldiers in American history. This is what he said about the problem of peace. With the monstrous weapons we already have, humanity is in danger of being trapped in this world by its moral adolescence. Our knowledge of science has clearly outstripped our capacity to control it. We've too many men of science and too few men of God. We've grasped the mystery of the atom and rejected the Sermon on the Mount. Man is stumbling blindly through spiritual darkness while toying with precarious secrets of life and death. Our world, ours is a world of nuclear giants and ethical infants. We know more about war than we know about peace. We know more about killing 
than we do about living. Folks, there's no hope for peace without God in the world. So says our text this morning, and so says all of human experience and history. Our hope must rest in God, who is present in the world even now, through the Spirit of His Son, Jesus, the one who is our peace. So I'll ask you again, do you believe in peace? Can you believe that peace is actually possible in our time? That's a question that God is asking on this Remembrance Day. If we would honor the soldiers and sailors and airmen and first responders, the merchant mariners who died in all our wars, if we would honor the families of those who came home broken by war, if we would honor the future of our children and our children's children who depend on us for the world that we will give to them, and if we would love God, serving him faithfully in spirit and truth, we would surely say, yes, we believe in peace because we believe in him. Friends, warriors, families, today we are invited to believe that peace is more than a possibility. It's already real through the one who first loved us, the one who died for us and rose again the one who is the Prince of Peace, even Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Dixon, for those words. And maybe someday, in the very near future, we may find some, the word peace in being practical. I'd like to uh, now call upon um, John Reeves from the Union Presbyterian Church here in Thorburn, leading us in a prayer of remembrance. Everyone, let's bow our heads in prayer. Remember those who fought and died those who returned carrying the scars of war, and we'll also remember those who stayed on the home front waiting, waiting for their loved ones and praying that they would return one day. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we remember those who have served our nation and died to protect and defend our freedom. Help us never to forget them and their efforts to keep us and our future generations safe. We honor those who are in conflicts and wars. We are thankful for those who returned home safely. May they know our gratitude. We pray for those whose bodies, mind, and spirits were harmed and broken by war, whose emotional, mental, and physical pain is so deep. Help us to love and support them. We pray for those who are in combat today those keeping peace, those holding back evil leaders, protect them from danger and bring them home safely and soon. May we all work to end all wars and establish a lasting peace that is built on justice, charity, and mutual understanding. We ask these things in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, John. Um, we'll now at the, the place in our program where we'll begin the, the placing of the wreaths. So uh, we'll call upon, uh, on behalf of the federal government of Canada, uh, Glenn Murphy, please.
for the province of Nova Scotia. Seymour Dutai. On behalf of the municipality of Pictor County, we have uh, Don Butler and Randy Palmer, county councillors. And on behalf of the Thorburn and District Veterans Association, Bill Marshall. Bob. Bob. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Bob. No problem. Getting ahead of myself. Anyone wishing to uh, lay an individual wreath, could you uh, please come up this way and if you pass your card along, we'll uh, read the name out and uh, if you uh, choose to do it privately after the service, then, then uh, that's fine. Uh, you, can, you can do so at your own leisure. Okay. Uh, hmm? Derek, Eatley. Derek Eatley from the uh, Thorburn Fire Department. Chief Dave Spon. Okay. On behalf of the Ladies Auxiliary, Retired Chief Dave Sponigal. IOF Moore Lodge, number 17 Thorburn, in memory of all veterans, laid by George Dutai, past Grandmaster. For Hudson Lodge, number 77. Uh, Ancient and affiliated accepted Masons, Master Trevor Wise. Do you want to take some of this, Mary Kay? <laughs> Do you want to go ahead. Me yeah, go ahead, take some. In memory of John Fraser Ross, laid by nieces. Placed in memory of past veterans by Union Presbyterian Church, laid by Kaylin McClellan. In memory of D. Clifford MacDonald, placed by his niece, Tina McClellan. Oh, you've got two. A. Lloyd MacDonald, Eric C. Finch, Alexander Wilson, A. McKean Dickey, Walter Dickey, and John H. Finch, laid by the MacDonald family. And in honor of all veterans, Trinity Maintenance, he had two of them. <laughs> yep. Hi there. In memory of Joseph Fiat, laid by his family. In memory of Stuart McDonald, remembered by the boys. <laughs> Thank you. In memory of James A. Cameron, killed in World War I, and Edward Monroe, World War II, veteran, placed by the family. In loving memory of Grant Ross, placed by his family. Hi, Stephen. Placed by the family in remembrance of Gordy McDougall. In memory of Franklin Crook and Jack Crooks, wreath laid by Jimmy and Amy Morrison. In memory of George Frazier and Bill Chase. Father. Pardon? My father. Oh, his father. 
Oh, this is being placed for John Charles Weir. Yeah, by the family. By the family. <laughs> In memory of Collie and Grant Ross, given by M and R Ross Logging, placed by Robert Ross and Cole Ross. Hi, Bear. In lovely memory in loving memory of all veterans placed by McDougal Building. Hmm? Bulldozing. 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 Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Didn't know the abbreviation. Thank you. In loving memory of Ellsworth McDonald, laid by a great great grandson, Reese McLeod. This wreath is laid in honor of Alex and Lena Murphy by great granddaughter Lena Chisholm. I know this face. We will remember them in memory of John F. Campbell and Huey McDougall. In loving memory of C.G. Ross by Nova Bannerman and family. In honor of all those served, Williams Brothers Limited. Oh yes, we keep that one. In memory of Corporal Ward Sponicle, laid by his son, Dave. Freedom Bible Church, Sutherland's River. Sergeant Robert Flynn and Sergeant Alexander Flynn, placed by family. I guess we finished. Uh, we'll have a few closing remarks here from uh, Robert Marshall, who was the president of the Thorburn and District Veterans Association. I just want to thank everybody for showing up and we've had a beautiful day and I hope you all have a better day after today. Have a good day. Thank you. That's all I can say. Thank you, Bob. Got it right that time. <laughs> My apologies. Um, I'd like to just before I call upon for the benediction, um, the audio visual today, as I mentioned earlier, was uh, supplied by Harold Fiat, and uh, it will be available for viewing online. He has a YouTube channel. Uh, if you subscribe, I'm told, it'll, it'll you'll be notified. And uh, if not, uh, he's hoping later today, but tomorrow certainly. Uh, YouTube.com at Pictou County Live. If you can. Google that you can uh, you can have a look at this service online tomorrow. So I would um, I'd like at this time to call Bill Colborn uh, to say uh, say our benediction. Thank you. Let us pray. Loving God, we remember that you are the giver of every good gift and one of your gifts is peace. You have blessed us with freedom, and you have met all our needs. We remember those who gave their lives in two world wars, the Korean War, and other conflicts. Lord Jesus, you said that people have no greater love than to lay down their life for their friends. You laid down your life for us, and you called us your friends. Those who were killed or maimed or scarred in wars laid down their lives for us. We remember that you are the source of peace and justice. We pray with all our hearts for peace in our times. Bring true peace to those places where conflict continues. We remember, O oh God, that homes, workplaces, schools, and streets are not always places of peace, yet you offered us a way of peace through the love of Jesus Christ. We hold up before you, O oh God, all those who work for peace, the Canadian peacekeepers, family members and friends who try to bring peace between loved ones, religious communities who teach and try to live the way of peace. Help us to be peacekeepers, peacemakers in our homes, our communities, and our world. 
We pray this through Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. O God, help us never to forget. Amen. We'll now have God, God save the King. God save a gracious king, long live a noble king, God save a king. Send him victorious, happy and glorious, long to reign over us, God save the king. And on behalf of the Veterans Association, I want to thank everyone who came out today. It's truly a blessing to have everyone back here. Thank you so much. <laughs>